Greetings, everyone. Um, I would just like to start by um, confessing my guilt. Yes, I apologize for the joke that I made last last time I was with you. Um, last time I made a video, I uh, made an ethnic joke, an ethnic joke on Jewish people, and um, I know it was in poor taste, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I made an uh, ethnic joke. Um, uh, uh, for those of you who know me well, who are familiar with me, I've had a v some very, very negative experiences with with uh, certain Jewish people. Certain Jewish people, I've had bad experiences. I was sexually assaulted on a sleep study by a Jew. And also, I had a friend named Judy. Um, we had a falling out, and it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, and it wasn't a pleasant falling out. It was as serious as you can imagine. So, um, she was bad to me, and I was bad right back to her, but she started it. Just so you know, she started it. And um, she was so bad to me. She, she was just so bad. I mean, she told me I had a nose like a pig, and she insulted me and attacked me relentlessly. She was so, so negative, so negative. And so I, I am sorry. I realized that that Judy's actions and the actions of the man that assaulted me are not representative of all Jews. So, they're not all the same. And um, I certainly, certainly didn't mean to imply that um, Zelensky is representative of all Jews. Certainly not. Certainly not. And... Um, that's a great insult, grave insult to the Jewish people. And so I apologize. I didn't mean to, to imply that Zelensky was representative of Jews in any way because you know, he's an individual. I was thinking, I was thinking along the lines, you know, I was thinking of Seinfeld and I was thinking of Mel Brooks. I was thinking of that guy with the red hair on, uh, uh, what is, show King of, Queens, King of Queens, uh, guy with the red hair, <laughs> and how they wave their hands in the air like this and get all excited and and uh, it's it's a shtick, it's a it's an old shtick, <laughs> and I and I just made fun of that. So I am sorry. I didn't mean to imply that Zelensky was representative of the Jews in any way. So I I do apologize. Now, getting to the topic of the the day, the topic of the day, which is uh, Will Smith. Will Smith at the Oscars slapping Chris Rock across the face. Um, I would just like to to put in my two cents on this subject. Um, first of all. It was a distraction, a major, major distraction. Was it? What was it a distraction for? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, what are they trying to distract us for? Oh, yeah, they're trying to distract us from what's happening in the Ukraine. They don't want us focusing on the Ukraine. They want us focusing on Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. So it was a weapon of mass distraction, and it doesn't really matter anyway in the grand scheme of things but it it was it was a weapon of mass distraction this is what the elites do okay this is what the elites do they come up with these ideas to distract the public it's called bread and circuses it's as old as the roman empire and what they do what these elites do is they provide distractions distractions and entertainment content and the news is considered entertainment too and what it's supposed supposed to be designed to do is to keep you from looking at what the elites are doing at the same time so the elites 
plan this invasion of the Ukraine and they're trying to use it to possibly start World War III. Maybe that's their plot. But they want to distract us at this, at this crucial juncture with Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. So Will Smith doesn't get any kudos from me for being a servant of, of the elites. And some people call the elites Illuminati. That's fine. You can call them Illuminati if you want to. But what they are really are is elites. They don't necessarily call themselves Illuminati. But they would readily admit to being elite. Oh, dear. So, um, yeah, the elites would admit right away to being elite. Because that's what they are. They're elitists. And elitists have no mercy. They have no mercy. The elites have no mercy and they didn't care what they did to Will Smith. They didn't care if they ruined his career. They forced him. They forced him to slap Chris Rock. They said, you'll never work in this town again unless you slap Chris Rock. You're going to do what we say and you're going to slap Chris Rock. Some people think it was an initiation of Will Smith into the elitist circle that to, in order to join the elitist circle and become an elite himself he he had to they had to have a sacrifice and it was a sacrificial um, humiliation of, of Will Smith a public humiliation to to initiate him well that's the toughest initiation I ever heard of maybe he didn't want to do anything sexual because they do, the elites do make, do initiations of people sexually in private. And um, it's, they do, they, they're into really kinky stuff. They're really kinky sex and it's not pretty. So maybe Will Smith decided to opt out of that, go for public humiliation instead. But boy, oh boy, as soon as he did it, they socked it to Will Smith. They socked it to him. And I really do believe that they forced him to do it. I don't believe Will Smith is, is that cloudy-minded. The whole thing was staged. It's just like Obama said recently when he, when he talked about Biden. He said he, he called him vice president and he said, that's a joke. It's a setup. That's what the elites thrive on, right? They thrive on setups. It comes from the mouth of Obama, who, who better to spill the beans about the elites than Obama, that they have these setups, that they, that they try to provoke certain individuals or tell them what to do, tell them to slap somebody. So Will Smith works for the elites. Will Smith created a weapon of mass distraction by slapping Chris Rock. And now Will Smith is paying the price for his loyalty to the elites. They reward his loyalty with public condemnation and even getting ejected from the Oscars and ejected from the, the uh, panel of judges for the Oscars. He's not allowed to vote anymore on the Oscars. They ejected him. So Will Smith winds up in the doghouse for obeying the elites and finds out that they really wanted to ruin his career. They wanted to ruin his career and they wanted him to ruin him personally as a person. Notice how hypocritical these media hounds are, how hypocritical the media hounds are and their elitist masters that are hiding behind the media and telling us what to think and what their opinions are. Because they condemn Will Smith for slapping Chris Rock but then when Amir Locke whips out a gun, when he whips out a gun and points it at police, that's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay to shoot an officer in the head, but it's not, not okay for Will Smith to slap Chris Rock at the Oscars when Chris Rock pissed him off. What is this world coming to? Why are people such hypocrites? I don't know. I don't know why they're such hypocrites. But um, I think that pointing a gun at an officer is a whole lot, be a whole lot worse than than slapping somebody. 
And yeah, he, I suppose he could have slapped him hard enough to kill him, but he didn't. Um, it might have even been faked. They made a practice, the skit, so that he didn't really make contact with him. Or maybe they may, they he was supposed to make contact, but didn't hit him hard enough to hurt him. And Chris Rock reacts immediately and springs back like he didn't even get hurt. He didn't even get hurt. He's right back. He didn't even fall down, and he and he's laughing and saying, "Wow, the fight of TV's finest hour." That statement, TV's finest hour, that was staged. That was planned. That was pre-planned. TV's finest hour, because they planned on having it in for Will Smith. So I can't pity him for serving the elites, but I don't believe he really did it. And even if he did do it. Let's face it, Chris Rock was being a smart ass. <laughs> yeah, my language isn't the best today, but it really, really gets to me when the elites stage these stunts. And um, check out the links in the description. You'll see some uh, some numerology that it's been done on on the the Chris Rock slap. They actually did some numerology on the Oscars and the ceremony, and um, they prove they've proven that the elites were leaving their calling card with the the planned time of the Oscars, the timing of the Oscars, and also the 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 slap itself, and Will Smith and Chris Rock, so. The, the Illuminati think, I, or the elites rather, I should say elites, not Illuminati. Uh, the elites plan far in advance. They plan these things. They, it, it, it's, it's true. There's no, there's no doubt about it in my mind that, that they plan these, these staged stunts. And all of, the, all of the actors are afraid for their necks. They know what's going on. They said, I thought it was a stunt. They, these actors are saying, I thought it was a stunt. I thought it was for show. And no, no, it was real. No, it was really real. They're trying to influence our opinion and convince us that it was real. So that everyone can be in a tizzy and, and condemn Will Smith. What Will Smith did wasn't really that bad. I mean, back in the day, it would have been business as usual right after he did it. it nobody would have even given a hiccup. But now that we live in the virtue signaling, woke, uh, hypocritical, um, hypersensitive world we're living in now, uh, a, a world um, created by the elites out of thin air that, that's uh, the Democratic Party and liberal liberal uh, persuasions in general. They have to condemn Will Smith. They have to condemn him just for being a man and for trying to defend his wife. So even if it was a real slap, they, 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 uh, they, they go too far. They go too far in their condemnation of him. They go too far saying, oh yeah, we don't hit, we don't use our hands, we don't use our fists, but we're going to send guns to the Ukraine. Hip, hip, hypocrisy, pure, pure hypocrisy. Um, because they're not true pacifists. They just enforce pacifism on everyone here at home, and uh, except for the wonderful rioters. The wonderful rioters can do anything they want. Anything, anything you want, rioters. You can do whatever you want. The rioters are mostly white youth that have been led astray. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're white youth that have been led astray, most of them. And um, how have they been led astray? They've been led astray to think that rioting is okay. Because rioting is not okay. Okay? Rioting is not better than Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Okay, it's worse than that. It's worse. So if you're going to 
uh, take the side of the rioters, um, I have little sympathy for you. But um, on to Ukraine. Um, it's terrible what's happening in Ukraine, okay? I get that. And I wasn't making fun of the situation with the Ukrainians either. Because I want the war in Ukraine to stop as much as anyone. But I can see realistically that you're not going to get Russia to stop by making zero concessions to Russia. You have to make concessions to Russia. You have to be willing to bend like the willow tree or else Russia is going to level Ukraine. And there's nobody in this world that can stop it. There's nobody who can stop the destruction. There's nobody who can stop the loss of life. There's nobody who can stop the genocide of the Ukrainian people unless they give in to Russia's demands because Russia is a superpower and Russia has lots and lots and lots of nuclear weapons, okay, and other kinds of weapons too. And Russia is willing to use these weapons on the whole world. So we have to, we have to rethink our strategy and we have to rethink our approach. We really, really have to rethink our approach to Russia. We have to be careful what we say what we do, how we respond to this. We basically we have to keep Russia and Vladimir Putin happy. It's not right and it's not fair, but it's the situation the world is in now. Yeah, that's the situation the world is in now. We're riding on the edge of a knife between uh, nuclear winter and and safety. And it could go either way, depending on how we respond to Ukraine's pleas. If, if Ukraine gave in to all of Vladimir Putin's demands, then it is possible that the killing and the shelling and the murder could end tomorrow. But first, Zelensky has to get out has to get out of Ukraine. Zelensky, you can go anywhere in the world you want. You can go to the Caribbean and be floating around on a pool floaty. I don't care. You could be floating on a pool floating tomorrow. Get out of Ukraine. Get out of Ukraine now. Okay? The, the presidency is over. Your people are devastated, completely devastated by this war. And, and you are at the heart of all of it. It all revolves around you. If you resign today, tomorrow you can be in the Caribbean enjoying a, a soda or whatever it is you like to drink, maybe a vodka. And... Leave the people of Ukraine alone. Everyone can go back to their homes. Everyone can go back to their homes. If they don't want to go back to their homes, the men can be allowed to leave and join their wives and children abroad. That, that's a crucial thing to ask for, to ask the Russians to let the men go and join their women and children abroad. Okay, that has to be part of the negotiation. But, um, yeah, people could go back to their homes. They've lost everything they've worked for, everything they own, everything they care about. They've lost. And they've lost it because Zelensky dug in his heels, doubled down, and was stubborn and said, I'm staying and I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight the Russians to keep my position of power. And that was wrong. That was wrong. That was the wrong, wrong response. Now that he sees the suffering he's created, you'd think he would give in now. But no, he's still pleading with the West for more weapons. More weapons of destruction. More weapons of war. He wants to keep it going. He wants to fight it out to the very last man 
a woman and child. He wants to fight it out to the very last breath. People who are getting out of Ukraine now are smart. They see the handwriting on the wall. And if I were a man, I would try to sneak out too. I would try to sneak out of Ukraine. But the men have to be allowed to leave and join their women and children abroad. And the people who stay need to be guaranteed safety as part of the negotiations. And then Vladimir Putin gets everything else he wants. He can have Ukraine. He can have Ukraine and he can rule Ukraine and he can lead Ukraine. And he can bring Russians to go live in Ukraine. But the destruction of people's homes, the destruction of their property, the destruction of their lives has to stop. It just does. It has to stop. You can't pretend that people were any freer under Zelensky than they would be under Putin. Yeah, Putin is not a nice guy. Yeah, he, he suppresses the press and it's not free. But neither was Zelensky. He suppressed the press too. It wasn't free under Zelensky either. So you can't say one is better than the other. Um, if people want to go back to their homes, they should have the option. If they want to leave the country, that should be their option too. That would be a fair and just ending. So I'm just calling on Zelensky, asking him to leave so that this war can end. Because guess what, people? It, it's cold, hard reality. It's not going to end. It's not going to end unless Zelensky leaves. Okay. Unless he leaves the country, his, the suffering of his people will continue for his sake so he can stay in power. So he can stay in a position of power. But he, he'll he be ru ruling over a ruin. His country will be a ruin. And eventually Zelensky will be blamed. And then he'll be, he'll be dead anyway. So he should leave now. He should see the handwriting on the wall. And he should leave now. The Ukrainian people are fighting for their lives. That's why they're fighting, because of their lives. If they knew that there was another option, I think they would take it. I think if they knew that Putin just wants Ukraine to rule over Ukraine and he wants to claim the territory for, for add it to his empire, um, they wouldn't be happy. But I think they would take that over the destruction. I really do. I really think, and people who wouldn't take it can move to the West, where undoubtedly the media is free and there's freedom of speech. So that's it. Um, I want the killing to stop. I want the bombing to stop. And I want the West to be safe. I want it to, to remain a safe haven that people, oppressed people around the world can escape too. I don't want the West to be a smoldering ruin. Okay, I don't want the war to come here. That's what I don't want. Not hurting or, or, or uh, um, dismissing the plight of the Ukrainian people but we have to prevent a world war at all costs. And that's, that's uh, my two cents on, on uh, the subject of Ukraine. And Will Smith, it's just a distraction. It's just a distraction from the elites. They're so good at this. They're so good at faking faking these things, and uh, they don't deserve our attention. So don't pay any attention to that. It's just a distraction, and I'll see you next time.